January 12th, and it's before 10 o'clock. Nice looking Wednesday. How are you doing anyway? You doing good? Your health is important, you know? <laughs> it is. But your money is important, too. Well, we were having a discussion yesterday about this, and, and you know, after the hurricane, uh, a lot of people have these unexpected expenses that just suddenly are a big issue for a lot of people. And you can see it. It's really getting to people, you know? And you think... You know, I know money, you're not supposed to say money can't buy happiness, but if if you had that money, I don't think you'd be as unhappy right now. You know? oh, right, exactly. So you know what? Let's talk about this and let's be real. Uh, Michael Eastham is on the phone. He's a CPA, a, a financial planner. He's the president of Fellowship Financial Group and he's a, an author. He's written a book called Common Sense Income Strategies. Simple, step-by-step -step ways to maximum your retirement. We've got a lot of retire retired folks in our community but we also have a lot of students from the universities so we got kind of both ends of this <laughs> and so if you're retired pay attention if you're if you're a student at the university pay attention because that's good you know it goes faster than you realize and so uh I, there was a kid on uh Clark Howard show the other day. I think he said he was 18 years old, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was getting some information. He had saved a bunch of money, and Clark Howard was, uh, you know, congratulating him on being so smart. So, you know, the only thing I was thinking was listening. Too bad I wasn't that smart back then. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Me too. Michael, I didn't save. Michael Easton, good morning. What an honor for having you on our show, to have you on our show. Well, the pleasure's all mine, and thanks so much for having me, Larry. It's great to be here. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Orlando. So we're practically neighbors on the other side of the forest. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Nice. Yes. How did you de uh, deal with the storm? We actually did great. We're very, uh, very blessed to not have any major damage, um, at least at our location. So uh, just a big mess. Got to yeah. clean it up. Yeah, I know. And, and if you had a home and, and it, was, it was ruined by the storm and you didn't have the proper insurance, oh, yeah, yeah, the money all of a sudden is a big issue. Not that you're here to talk about yeah. storms and that kind of thing, but, but you know, I mean, I mean, money is money. If you have it, you, you, you'll be better off, I think. I mean, it only makes sense. It looks like it's making makes sense, right? I don't know why people. Why do you embarrass you? Try to make you shame you for talking about money, right? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so what what does your your uh, book teach us to do? Well, what uh, common sense income strategies is designed to do is to uh, to help uh, help folks who are in what I refer to as the red zone of retirement. Uh, maybe that 10 years before, five years into retirement, to trust their gut instincts more often. I, I think a lot of people are, are swayed based on a lot of the financial news media that they read and, and see on TV. And a lot of that is just primarily based on putting money uh, at risk. And that's okay when you're 18 and you can ride out a major stock market adjustment. But if you're 65 years old or 70 years old uh, on the doorstep or in retirement, you can't afford that kind of a major like we've seen over the last 15 years or so. Right. So you've got to take a different approach to your investment strategy. And, and is it, um, do you have more leverage the younger you are? That almost seems to be obvious, but I don't know that it is. Well, you know what? You know what's really interesting is if you're. It depends on what your target is. Uh, people get so excited about the, the the sexy opportunities in the stock market, right? You know, you want to buy. You want to find the next Apple if you're young, or the next Microsoft and right. ride it all the way up. Right. You got plenty of time. Um, but the the backside of that is, well, you know, that that stock is going to go up and down and up and down. But if you're if you are starting young and you're investing in a modest you know, modest types of uh, of investment vehicles generating income, interest, and dividends, then, um, then you know, accumulating that money over time takes a lot of the stress out of the volatility in the market. It doesn't affect you as much. And so you've got a consistent kind of the tortoise and the hare analogy is a good way to look at it. Um, um, before you tell us what to do, tell us what we should steer away from. I, I often wonder, like in the middle of the night when you're listening to these infomercials, I often wonder, is, is this really, I mean, how do you know? I'd, I'd rather sit across the desk from somebody and say, hey, tell me what I should do. Give me, show it to me. And I'm, I'm kind of old-fashioned that way, but is, is that, yeah. how do we know what to stay away from? Well, I, th I certainly think that, um, that taking uh, more risk than is prudent uh, is out of the question. You know, people, people minimize risk that exists in things like the stock market or, or individual stocks. And it's okay to invest some of your money in, the, in those types of more risky investments. But do you want to bet the ranch? 
Uh, hmm. That's that's right. really where it comes down to. So make sure you've got a reasonable balance uh, based on your 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 gut instincts for one thing, but also based on informed uh, information that can help you make good decisions. And outside of uh, buying a home or buying a, a vehicle, are more people starting to save up now and pay for items in cash instead of going in credit card debt, thereby freeing up some of their money to make those investments? Yeah, I think we've seen a lot of um, of credit card uh, debts getting paid down over the last several years since 2010. Uh, but I mean, cars and automobile excuse me, cars and homes generally are too much of a price point for people, so they end up taking our loan. I think the the goal is to try and make sure that you're able to pay it off as quickly as possible because it is a it is a headwind against your ability to earn money um, for retirement, and that's kind of the goal. You know, Warren Buffett himself, he's got, he's got two rules of investing that I like to share with people. Rule number one is don't lose what you have, and rule number two is see rule number one. <laughs> so the faster you can get to that point, um, the, the better off you're going to be, and that means paying off debt as quickly as possible. Uh, does the book help us understand, uh, in your world, you're probably uh, familiar with all the jargon, all the, the, the what 401k means and what uh, a Roth IRA is and all those other terms. Does the book help us out with in a, in a glossary kind of a way? Well, what it does is um, it, it, it doesn't dig into individual, like uh, what a retirement count is or 401k is, but what it does is help you to understand in a simplified manner um, using just lay lay people's uh, 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 jargon or discussion, um, the simplified way to understand what, what are the tools that we need in order to invest in retirement, um, what's a reasonable investment philosophy, and what's the, the, the total truth about how to, um, how to make money in the markets. And, um, and too, many, uh, too many folks forget about the fact that, hey, our parents and grandparents, they save money the old-fashioned way. They, they put money aside. They saved money consistently. It wasn't as much of a consumer mindset. Today, we do have a more of a, a consumer mindset, and it makes it difficult for people at times. So you have to kind of change your, uh, your own internal philosophy, and that takes some education. So that's what Common Sense Income Strategies is all about. Are you also speaking to employers because they have to make sure that their employees are happy? Yeah, absolutely. We we certainly address some of those things um, uh, with respect to the impacts of um, of employer decisions on it, employees who are trying to invest and save for retirement. Um, how how much of it is how much uh, how much importance is put on maintenance? In other words, let's say I, I sit down with you and we come up with a strategy. Do I mm -hmm. is is it signed, sealed, and delivered, or do I have to keep going back to it and and uh, tweaking it? Well, for for our clients, what we we do an active management type of a style. So we're a registered investment advisory firm, and so we have a fiduciary obligation to make sure that we're managing towards client goals. And um, and we're not just we don't deal with just one, any one product. We have a whole spectrum of investments. So that implies that we're looking at uh, potential changes in uh, in investment conditions and in certain types of of investments. And also goals that uh, that our clients have. Goals are a starting point for us. Once we understand the goals, then we can help to develop a strategy that's designed to support those goals, uh, and not one that's in direct conflict. Which is what I I see too many times when people come into our office off the street. Do you think there is propaganda from the government trying to dissuade people to invest? Because uh, we know people in in our own community, and and we're doing just fine. But the government makes it seem like we're all in a dire 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 straits. Well, that's a really good point, and unfortunately, you have to dig deep in order to unravel that question. Um, I mean, if you if you look back at, at the way that uh, that the Federal Reserve has been acting the last ten years, or yeah, pretty much ten years since the the last market correction, um, and and the stock market itself, you know, Wall Street has been really trying to make people come to realize that hey, you throw up your hands, it's like, well, I can't get yield anywhere, so I guess I got to throw my money uh, at the at the the whim of the stock market because that's the only place I have any hope or potential for getting gains. And that's absolutely not true. So that's a, one of the myths that, uh, that I try to help people understand. 
Wonderful. Uh, the book is called Common Sense Income Strategies. It's written by our guest, Michael Easton. I found it on, on Amazon. It's getting really good reviews. Um, do we have a copy of it? No, here? we do not. We don't have a copy of it here, but you can get one on Amazon. Do you have a website that you can direct us to besides Amazon? Absolutely. You can go to fellowshipfinancial.com. Again, it's fellowshipfinancial.com. There's information about our firm, about the book as well. You can click right there and, and order it uh, directly as well. All right. Very good. Uh, thank you for being on the air with us today, Michael. It's my pleasure. You guys have a great day. Thank you. We'll take a little break and we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source.